episode 134. Are these comics going to make good film and television shows? We got Moon Knight, we got Rook Exodus, and we have Dick Tracy. Let's chat about him right now. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Thank you so much for spending time with me as we rant about movies, comic books, and television shows, as well as the occasional board game. I am your host, Frank Zenk. I'm an award-winning screenwriter, novelist, and comic book writer, as well as an independent filmmaker. Uh, yeah, I had some good meetings uh, last week, especially with one production company that I am teaming up with. And I'm excited, uh, you know, they're actually talking about helping me pitch Aminara, uh, which I, uh, I really want that. I think that series has some really good potential, and I'm sorry that it's just sitting there doing nothing uh, because I can't, uh, I don't have the ability of taking it anywhere. But anyway, so yeah, uh, that's the story on that, but I will keep you guys informed. Uh, but if you're looking at my face here, I've got, obviously got a little sunburn. Uh, we went out to uh, Georgia, fly Six Flags over Georgia. Uh, we were there for the majority of the day. Uh, we walked about four miles outside <laughs> and went on. It was dead. Uh, we I have no idea why. It's been technically summer and it was dead. Uh, I guess they said that it was supposed to rain and didn't, so nobody came out. I know, but we got to go on every single roller coaster of the entire thing. <laughs> so you try going on ten roller coasters in a day and see how your stomach feels. <laughs> Anyway, uh, remember to give me a like and a subscribe. Give me that thumbs up. And if you can uh, subscribe, please do. Uh, I'm trying to grow the channel out. Uh, and if you'd like to read anything that I've written in the past, check out the link in the description below. It'll take you to my Amazon page. Uh, plus, Mark Spears and I are relaunching uh, Myth Lord's Classic Monsters deck builder game on Kickstarter this time. Uh, we feel that Kickstarter is probably a better uh, thing than Backer Kit was. Uh, so you can check out the link below. We're going to be launching it in the beginning of August after Gen Con. So if you guys are going to Gen Con, Gen Con is the Comic Con for board games. Uh, so I'm going to be there uh, showing off the game and play it, playing it with people. Uh, anyway, we're launching right after that, which is after next week. So beginning of August, it's going to get launched. So you can sign up to get notification when that happens. All right, so let's jump into Moon Knight and... If you watch my other review of Moon Knight, where Mark Spector was supposed to come back, it was called Fist of Conchu number zero. God, that thing was an embarrassment. So happy to say that this is Vengeance of Moon Knight number seven, where he does come back, even though I think they should have kept him dead a little bit longer. Uh, there were some really good moments in here, and we are back to, uh, with I think this is Jed McKay, we are back to form in this one, thank God. But this is the continuation of the blood hunt thing that I'm not collecting. It's basically about, you know, the sun, you know, is overcast, so all the vampires are out, so the entire, I think Blade has something to do with it. I don't even know. I don't care. Uh, I don't care about events anymore, and I just wish they'd stop doing them because it just gets in my way. But anyway, so Mark Spector is dead. He sacrificed himself. We had this other Moon Knight come in that was a, a, a villain pretending to be him. Uh, and he was dispatched pretty quickly. So now we have the whole Midnight Mission thing going on where the uh, the vampires that run that, the good vampires run that, uh, along with uh, Hunter's Moon, which is the brother, uh, brother via Conchu of Mark Spector. Uh, kind of teaming up with his ex-girlfriend or with his girlfriend, I guess, wid widow girlfriend. I don't know how you'd call that, uh, which is Tigra. I have no idea why Tigra doesn't have her own book at this point. I love Tigra, uh, and uh, I, I wish that she'd have her own book. I collect that in a second, depending on who writes it. Don't, no, no Kelly, whatever, <laughs> or any of those writers uh, that are right, Stephanie Phillips, Satini Howard, none of those. Uh, give me a good writer on a Tigra book and I get it. But anyway, so we have Tigra and a Hunter's Moon, which, you know, he kind of looks like Moon Knight, and that's why you know, he doesn't have the hood on or anything to that effect. But anyway, they're going 
to get Khonshu out of Asgard. He is... So the god is... <laughs> so the Egyptian god is in imprisoned in Asgard. I don't really know what happened there, but that's why Mark couldn't come back from the dead because Khonshu is imprisoned. So they decide to get him out. So they need... And, I, and this is wrong. See the guy up top? He looks like he has purple skin. He doesn't. He doesn't even look like he has a mask on. I don't really know what they did there, but the the uh, colorist did a bad job. But anyway, they were sneaking through Asgard. They get to a vaulted door here. But anyway, the, the guy that they were ended up being was Wrecker, and because he has a crowbar that's imbued with god magic. So he breaks the chains off and releases Khonshu. And Khonshu comes out and says, I am free! I wasn't even making that up. That's what did he say. Just, just like that, too. And uh, I guess Steve Ditko died. Um, I guess a while ago they do Disney Legends with Steve Ditko. I don't know when, when he died. But anyway, splash page, etc. And he's like, do not doubt me. I will bring Mark Spector back from the dead. And she's like, don't play with me. And he's, she's, he's like, oh, I'm not. I'm not. Look at my power. <laughs> that was the one thing they kind of did right was the gods that they did in the original Moon Knight TV series. Although it shouldn't have been like a kaiju thing. I, I don't know. But anyway, he says, behold, I bring you Mark Spector, the Moon Knight, my son, back. From the grave! <laughs> and Tigra's like, Mark? And she's like, Tigra? I forgot Tigra's real name. Oh, Greer. Uh, Greer, and they run to each other as like a romance thing. And it's actually a really nice moment, even though it's completely cheesy. And uh, they literally run to each other, like from here to eternity kind of thing. And then they kiss. So, I thought that was a nice moment. So we have Mark Spector back, and he's like, we have to go to war. We have to stop the vampires now that you've had your kiss. But Moon's like, yes, we will go to war. Okay. And that's the, so really the whole thing is basically three scenes. But the artwork is always really good. The characters keep this going. But I think we should have seen a little bit more progression of story in here than what we got. Because literally that's all it is. So it's literally them go sneaking into Asgard, breaking Khonshu out, and then raising Mark, and them sharing a kiss, and them going to war. That's it. That's the entire book. We couldn't have a little bit more story in there. Anyway, I think Jed McKay's kind of getting a little lazy. But for the most part, I liked it. At least we're back to form. Um, I do wish that we could get this group of characters together to do another Moon Knight series that's way better constructed than the boring thing we got with the multiple personalities and stuff like that. It just didn't work, dude. The best thing we got out of that was his girlfriend uh, becoming uh, a god or a goddess as well with the wings and stuff like that. I liked all that, but Tigra being in here is far better than that. All right, so uh, so my answer is yes so far. I, I really like, I wouldn't have been collecting this as long as I have if I didn't like it. All right, so let's jump into Rook Exodus, probably one of the best comics on the market right now. Uh, this is only issue four, but the world building around it is amazing. Uh, this would, uh, I'll tell you right off the bat, this would make a great film. Uh, I almost hope, wish we could get one like this. So the storyline is that the elites and people like that left Earth and went to a planet called Exodus, which is the stupidest name ever because Exodus literally means that you're abandoning it, <laughs> which is what happens. So they go to a planet called Exodus and then they literally do a mass Exodus from Exodus. <laughs> so they have a world building machine there that ends up breaking down. So the world now is reverting back to the uninhabitable planet that originally it was. So a lot of the elites said, okay, well, here's my rocket ship. Out of here. They, either went, they went back to Earth or wherever they went. 
But there are a lot of people that did not have rocket ships and could not leave. And one of these guys is Rook, and he was building his own. Now, Rook and a bunch of the other people that are still there are called Wardens. And what the Wardens are is they wear these helmets that they connect to the wildlife that they brought there. So this was not indigenous. They brought animals from Earth to populate Exodus. They should have spelt it differently, at least, is what I would think. But anyway, so uh, we have a girl that controls wolves. Rook does crows. We had swine that does pigs. They're not really pigs because they have tusks, so it's kind of like Pumba, warthog type of situation. Uh, and then we have this new player that's a criminal, and he ends up getting the bear one. And they were reaching out to all the other ones. So there's a bunch of them. There's like a deer one. There's a snake one. There's one for like almost everything. Uh, so the villain comes in and he ends up, he has the bear one. And these bears are huge. So they're like, some of them are mutated. A lot, I don't know why Rook's birds aren't mutated, which would have been cool if they were a lot bigger because he's kind of the weakest guy. But at least make his, his things bigger. Uh, so even the warthogs I thought were a little bigger than they should be. But anyway, some of these things got mutated. There's the turtle guy one that also his his turtles were huge. They had an entire people could sit on them and stuff like that. So they were huge. But anyway, the guy who does the bear one. He ended up killing swine, stole his helmet, gave it to one of his guys. And so now we have the swine villain. And then we also have a villain that's with him that does the snakes. So they went into the warden machine, the one that controls all the helmets, and made sure that everything was all working, and then also reached out to everybody to, to ask for backup. And this guy is coming to take it and be con can control it with his little army. So meanwhile, uh, they're in the machine doing reaching it out. It looked like a tree. I, I like the real design of it. And Rook immediately said... Yeah, the bear guy's here, so we got to go fight go fight him. So yeah, so we got this nice flash page of Rook's Crows and then the girl's Dire Wolf's Wolves, that she's called Dire Wolf. They keep losing control of the animals. They have to keep continually reconnecting, but they're going to go into war here. And the bottom panel is the guy that does the turtles. And he's like, I'll watch over the engine while you guys go fight. And I'll continue reaching out. I don't know why he slips here. I don't understand what happens there. But I guess all that happens is that he disconnects from the things. But anyway, here comes Swine. The evil Swine now riding on the uh, the Warthog. And we have, you know, fights with animals. And he also blames him because him and Swine were friends. So he blames him for the death of his friend. But you can see, too, that even the snakes are mutated. And that is Dire Wolf that came up from underneath her. And now she has to go fight it. But also the Warden of the Snakes, which is the villain, is fighting her. And meanwhile, the bear guy is going to attack the turtle guy who is in control of the device that he wants. And he looks pretty overbearing there. So now we have the snake chick come in, and I guess they had some kind of relationship where she booted her from the warden department. Her name was like Ka or something like that, and Dire Wolf's like, yeah, you just weren't living up to it, so I stand by my decision not to promote you in the, uh, in the program. And she's like, fall, I'm just going to kill you for it. But nope. Uh, she gets the better of her uh, as far as her snakes are concerned, and then defeats her. Meanwhile, we switch back to Rook and uh, the Swine, or the evil Swine, fighting. And eventually, he kills, or gets, oh, that's right. He, <laughs> he asks for Dire Wolf's help, and the wolves attack him. So he gets the Swine helmet back, but now the other, and, oh, and Pumbaa, he actually calls the Warthog Pumbaa. So he remembers him, even though he's not wearing the helmet. And he says, don't worry, I got you. You don't have to worry about the bad guys anymore. But then he's surrounded by the wolves. And he says, uh, Dire Wolf, could you help me out here and make sure that they don't eat me? 
<laughs> and he's, she's like, well, they're not responding. Uh, but finally they respond and they leave him alone. Uh, and we have that big crater in the middle where the snake came out. But yeah, so that we find the turtle guy uh, is now a goner. And I guess he takes the whole warden thing. They try to stop him. Uh, but I don't think they succeed. So she, he, she th he throws her at him. He loses his helmet. And now he's not in control of the birds anymore. They're f trying to fight him anyway. He has the, uh, the helmet still in his hand as he's being lifted up from the ground by the bear guy. And I keep forgetting the bear guy's name. But she's reaching out and he, uh, he throws him th off the, uh, uh, the falls. So that's where we leave him right now is that we don't know if he's going to live or die. He's got to live. Is the name of his book. The book is Rook. <laughs> so unless they're going to change the name halfway through. But this is really good. Like I said, the artwork is really good. The world building is really good. I mean, there's nothing not to like here. So if you're not uh, reading this, I suggest you do because it's it's going to get good. And we're only on issue four and it's, a lot of stuff has happened. Uh, so I don't feel like the story's going nowhere. And uh, like I do with the Black Panther, I'm going to eventually do. It's, I, I'm going to be dropping that one. But anyway, yeah, definitely check that out. Would it make a good movie? Hell yeah, it would make a good movie. I thought it would be a great movie. All right, I don't know where the ending's going to go. I don't think it's stick the landing for the ending for the at least the first arc here. I don't know if this is an ongoing or they're going to stop at 12 or whatever. I don't know what's going to happen there. All right, so let's jump into Dick Tracy. Of, Dork, of course, Dick Tracy uh, was a serial strip in like the Sunday more in the Sunday uh I don't know if he was in the other ones but definitely the Sunday uh newspapers when we had newspapers it was this there was this basically a strip series that you know Conan had one Flash Gordon Spider-Man even had a had a strip I used to collect the strips and then cut them out of the newspaper and then make a little comic out of them uh but yeah so that's where Dick Tracy started, and then it became a movie that was kind of over the top with Warren Beatty and uh, Madonna. Uh, but yeah, it, it never spawned a sequel. I don't think it did very well anyway. It was very over the top, but the colors were fun. So now we're getting a more of a dark version of it, but uh, Dick Tracy had a two-way wrist radio, so he had like future tech that we have now, basically, with our, our, like, our own iPhone watches. That's basically what he had. <laughs> but anyway, so we have a conspiracy going on where we have the mobsters that are doing some kind of a real estate kind of situation here. And they're killing people to keep it a secret. And Mumbles had that, but now he was just executed in the last thing. And Flat Top is the big baddie here. Uh, Lips Manless, I think, is the main head bad guy. And then you have uh, Pruneface. I think it's Pruneface. But anyway, so Pat Patton and Tess are both with uh, Dick Tracy on this. Pat Patton's brother, who was a, uh, a vet from the war. Cause remember, this takes place in like the 50s. So right after World War II, a lot of the vets are coming back. And I think Dick Tracy's a vet and Pat Patton's a vet also. But anyway, and his brother came back uh, and that he was murdered uh, basically on the job. So he saw something he shouldn't see. So the brother now, Pat, is coming in to try to uh, find out what happened. So they've, and on top of that, there was a massacre in a diner. And Tess's father was a journalist that was also murdered. So he was getting information from another guy, and that's why he was murdered. But anyway, that's all the stuff that's going on. So there it starts out with them on a stakeout, which goes badly. Uh, but anyway, so they see uh, Pruneface there through the binoculars. He gives the binoculars to Pat that verifies that, and he tells the story of the fact that Pruneface was uh, a betrayer of his entire squadron during the war, but when they napalmed it or whatever they did, uh, he got hit. And so he was burned pretty badly. And that's where he got 
the pruned face from. So anyway, and I guess that Dick Tracy is getting, you know, flashbacks of the war and stuff like that. But anyway, so they're, they're planning a raid, so they think there's drugs in here, so they crash through. But instead, they find nothing. So Dick Tracy is, looks like, you know, incompetent because all they find is building materials. However, this other muscles comes in, or shoulders, yeah, shoulders comes in, uh, who's working for Lips Manless, that's like his enforcer, and he starts just mowing people down, including the cops that were doing the raid. So he's hitting Lips Manless's guys, and he's hitting the cops, and Dick Tracy and Pat Patton just happen to be able to get out of the way quick enough to dive behind a crate as these bullets are going everywhere. And he says, cover me, and he goes out shooting, and he's like, cover me. Oh, what the hell? There's bullets everywhere. So anyway, we get, uh, I guess that causes my shoulders to really run away and leaving just a pile of dead bodies around. Meanwhile, Tesco's looks for mumbles and realizes that he's has been executed with the back of his head blown off. So, meanwhile, we see other uh, people coming in to look around uh, that are the bad guys, and she gets out of there just in time, uh, and then she runs to tell them that Mumbles is dead. So, part of their investigation is now gone. So that's what's going on there. And meanwhile, then he has a... And they're trying to figure out that there's a mole in the department because somebody told them where they'd be to get... Uh, to have shoulders come in and start mowing everybody down. And his chief is acting very, very strangely. And he feels that uh, the chief is the part of the problem. We don't know for a fact, but that's... He is acting extremely like he's covering stuff up. But anyway, they're like, well, what are we going to do now? You know, we basically have to keep this between us. And he's like, I'm going to handle this on my own. And Tess is like, oh, hell no, you're not. <laughs> We're with you, period. And she basically stands in his way. And he's like, all right, then let's do this together. Then you have shoulders here who's having a little tiff with his girlfriend. And he's like, look, I have to go. Lips is, he's like, she's like, well, when are you going to be the boss? Because all you do is uh, jump whenever he calls. And they go to answer the door, and this guy just drops. And behind uh, him is Flat Top, and Flat Top just kills them all. Kills the muscle, uh, no, he called muscles, but shoulders and his girlfriend. And that's where it ends right now. So, yeah, this is really good. Uh, for a Dick Tracy book, it's very dark. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, little twists going on here. It's keeping some action going. Uh, there's definitely a very prominent villain, which I appreciate. So, yeah. Uh, so, let's uh, wrap it up real quick. Dick Tracy, yeah, this would make... I would love to see another Dick Tracy movie. And I think the storyline's pretty good here. Rook Exodus, uh, probably the best uh, book out there right now. Would definitely make a good movie. And then Moon Knight, uh, back to form, but I wish we had a little bit more story, but Mark Spector is back after just two months. <laughs> Quick as death ever. <laughs> and, and resurrection. Uh, but yeah, I, I love the characters around it. Would love to see a Tiger book on her own. Uh, but yeah, this would make a lot better storyline uh, than what we had with the regular TV show with Moon Knight. So that's it for me. Thank you guys for watching, watching all the way to the end. Uh, also remember to give me a like, give me that thumbs up. If you can post a comic, uh, comment, please do tell me what you're collecting. Uh, cause I also do this not only for people that are collecting, but for people that aren't so they can see what Marvel, DC and independents are doing right now. Uh, in case you do see these things pop up and you say, oh yeah, I did see that. Uh, also remember to give me a subscribe if you can. I am trying to grow the, can the channel out. And also remember that Mark and I are... Uh, releasing this on Kickstarter, uh, this monster card game where you can play as the different uh, monsters. It's also going to come with figures this time. Uh, anyway, check the link uh, below for Kickstarter and you'll be able to sign up for notification about when we launch in a week or so. 
All right, thanks again for watching, guys. Check out some of my other videos, and I will see you guys on the next episode. Thanks again for watching.